How did you discover this book by Sarah Le Fanu? So this is Dreaming of Rose by Sarah Le Fanu. And I had no idea it existed. Sarah Le Fanu is a biographer of Rose Macaulay and her biography came out in 2003 and I have a copy. I've used it a lot. And she published a new book a couple of years ago called Something of Myself and I went to one of the events around it in Bristol and she gave a talk and it was extremely interesting and then one could go buy copies of the book and she brought some of her self-published work and I had no idea that she published her own work privately. And I looked and I thought, good Lord, it's a book about Rose Macaulay. So in two th when Sarah had been writing her biography, she'd been keeping a journal of what it was like for the research process. And from that, she created this book called Dreaming of Rose, which was a, a biographer's journal of the research process and the journeys that she took intellectually, physical, like she went to different places to do the work, and also her journey of learning about this woman's life. So she self-published it in 2013 and I bought a copy and I read it about a month later when it, it surfaced at the top of my to be read pile. And I was just blown away because it was the perfect adjunct to the biography itself. It was the, the conversation in the biographer's head, the record of what life was throwing at her when she was trying to do the research and she was having a bit of a tough time. It was just a remarkable record of three or four years in one woman's life as a writer, as a teacher, as a mother, as a neighbour. And Rose Macaulay's life was emerging during that time into being as a biography. So it was a remarkable book on its own. How does Dreaming of Rose fit with Handheld's other titles? So when I read this, I thought we've got to republish this. And the thing about self-published books, they very rarely sell very much and quite often they have dreadful covers and they don't get any marketing so nobody knows about them. So I wrote to Sarah and said would you be interested in me republishing and she said yes definitely so we very quickly agreed a contract um, and I wanted to do this not just because it was a fabulous book but because we already had three Rose Macaulay titles in print. We have What Not, we have Potterism and we have Non-Competence non and Others and we were about to bring into print personal pleasures. So this makes, in, in marketing terms, this makes a really coherent reason to have a book about Rose Macaulay as well as books by her. It just makes perfect sense. What does it tell us about Rose Macaulay? Dreaming of Rose tells the story of how Rose almost hid part of her life. And it tells us a lot more about her relationship with her lover Gerald O'Donovan, who was a married man with children, and Rose was a godmother to two of his children, but his wife and his children never knew about their relationship. It also tells us about Rose's oldest friend, um, who was called Marjorie Grant Cook, who herself was a novelist, and we will be publishing one of her novels, because Sarah uncovered things about their relationship in diaries and letters and remarks made by the O'Donovan grandchildren that made her think that perhaps Marjorie too had had an affair with Gerald at the same time that Rose was. I mean, the complexity of the, of the, of the relationships was extraordinary. So you get a sense of what Rose and Marjorie's life was like in the 1920s and 30s and the 40s um, as increasingly important literary figures and as women leading single professional lives, developing their own relationships, living the life they wanted. And you also get a sense of what it might have been like for the O'Donovan family, with Rose always around. She may not have been the most pleasant presence, so it gives a much better picture of what Rose Macaulay was like as a person.